Okay, our next part, we are going to discuss some airway adjuncts. This would be an oral pharyngeal airway, and the idea of the oral pharyngeal airway is to help control the tongue for a longer period of time than us doing a basic airway maneuver. So if you did the basic airway maneuver and things didn't work very well for you, you're not able to ventilate the patient very well, um, or they're not breathing, and we may need to go to an oral airway to help control that tongue because the patient is unconscious. Some indications for an oral airway are going to be that the patient is without a gag reflex. So basically they have to be unconscious in the event that we're going to be utilizing this. An oral airway is designed to go ahead and control the tongue. And our best way to measure these is going to be from the corner of the ear. So we're going to go from the ear, from the tragus of the ear, and we're going to go to the corner of the mouth. So when I place this one in line, you will notice that this is now a little bit too big. So in this case, if it is too big, it may actually occlude the airway and not help us out at all. So it's going to occlude the airway. If we go to our next size, we go from the tragus of the ear to the corner of the mouth and we know that this is the correct size airway. This goes right to the corner of the mouth and therefore it would fit into the patient appropriately. Now there will be a couple of ways that we can place this in. Um, the easiest thing to do would be to do a scissor technique. So you're going to make sure that you have a scissor technique in this way. I call it as though you're almost snapping your fingers. You're going to open up the patient's mouth. You will take the oral airway and it's inserted upside down until you meet resistance because now you're on a hard palate, if you recall from the lecture material. And now we're going to rotate that 180 degrees and it will slide into place until the flange is flush against the lips. Okay. To remove an oral pharyngeal airway, in the event that the patient regains consciousness and they may have a gag reflex, we're going to make sure that we'll have suction available, which we are going to talk about here in a little bit. But to remove this, and even from the mannequins, your instructors will love this as well because it does help the mannequins out, is that we're going to just remove this straight out. You'll notice that it is now following the curvature of the jaw and of the tongue. Another way that you may be able to put this in will be to just basically just take the tongue and the jaw and you're moving it out of place. And now we're going to come in from the side and move it towards the midline. And now you can see that we have a nice, easy entrance into the airway and we now have our oral pharyngeal airway set. You don't want to use your thumb and your finger. You can utilize possibly a laryngoscope blade that your ALS providers may have, and you're not hooking it up to the handle, you're just using the blade as a tongue blade, and sometimes that may be the easiest thing that's available. You might find some bite sticks, um, or uh, your finger works just as well. Just have to be careful, the patient wakes up, you don't need them to bite down on your finger as well, okay? So we'll take this one out. We're going to go ahead and show you a better view here of inserting and measuring an oral pharyngeal airway. Our first airway, again, we're going to go from the trachis of the ear to the corner of the mouth. And as you take a look here, you will notice that there is about a good inch that is sitting here that is exceeding past his mouth. And that's going to be something that is too big, so we would move that off to the side. We'll go to another size, and we're going to go again from the trachis of the ear. And now you can see that we're right here at the corner of the mouth. So in this case, I'm going to take my fingers as though I'm going to snap, and I'm going to just do a cross finger technique. I've now taken the oral airway. I have it in upside down. I'm now meeting resistance to the back of the throat or basically against the hard palate. And I'm now going to rotate it 180 degrees, and it now slides into place. I've now inserted my oral airway. Again, to remove it, we're going to make sure that we can bring this straight out and it follows the curvature of the jawline. Another way that we may insert this is to take the jaw like this. We're going to then take our properly sized oral airway and we're now going to insert it directly. And again, all we are doing is maintaining control of the tongue. And another airway that we can take a look at is a nasal pharyngeal airway. Nasal pharyngeal airways are designed to go into the nose and they are again going to help control that tongue. So we're basically with this we are bypassing it. This flange actually prevents the person from breathing it in and they're not going to inhale it but there's a nice little hollow opening here and this allows the patient to breathe in and out. This is, has a bevel on the end and the bevel always goes towards the septum. 
So it is designed primarily to go into the right nair. And when we place it into the right nair, you're going to go straight back. You're not going to go up. That's what a lot of people think that your nose goes up, but in fact, it is just going to go straight back. This is indicated for anybody who has our inability to access their jaw. They may have, um, their, again, their tongue, jaw, their, their tongue and their whole jaw mouth area is not able to be accessed, or they have a gag reflex in place. I found this to be very useful in patients who had low blood sugars, patients that um, had overdoses, and we were working on securing their airway and doing some effective ventilations, and this worked just well. So in this case, we're going to provide some lubricant. And in this case, I've already went ahead and lubricated up the, the mannequin and the airway. So we're gonna lubricate this up. We are going to insert it into the right nair. And we're just going to continue to insert this until the flange comes to rest on the nose. And we've now inserted our oral airway, or I'm sorry, our nasal pharyngeal airway. Now, in the event that we need to go pull that out, again, we're going to just pull straight out. We do not have to rotate anything, and it's back out. Now, as I said earlier, this is designed to go into the right nair. However, if we need to go into the left nair, what we're going to do is take the bevel, and it's always going to go towards the septum. We're going in on that left nair. We start to meet resistance, and we're rotating it now 180 degrees, and it has now come to rest. For our nasal pharyngeal airways, we're going to again measure from the trachis to the ear and we're going to go to the nose. This one here you see is just a little bit too big. So we're going to go to a different size. And here we're going to go from the trachis to the ear and it goes right to the nose. This has now been lubricated up. And because of that bevel, we are now going to take this bevel and it's going to go right here towards the septum of the nose. So we're going to insert this. And we're now inserting this, and I just switched hands so you could see it better. And we have now inserted the nasopharyngeal airway into the right nair. We we'll just remove this out. If our patient actually wakes up and they're starting to complain about it, I've run into the issue in which the patient actually removes them themselves sometimes. If we're going into the left nair, again, we're taking the bevel and we're moving it towards the septum. So we're going to go in, we'll start to meet resistance, and we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. And now we have inserted our nasal pharyngeal airway into the left nair. We've now secured our airways with both the oral airway as well as our nasal pharyngeal airway. Now, there are some, some folks will tell you about a contraindication for this meaning that there should be no head injury. Um, the reality is, is that the majority of the time that we do need to use this and we can't access the jaw, the airway becomes very important for us to make sure that we secure it. Otherwise, any injury that is inside the head is not going to get any better. In fact, it will get worse. Um, so there is essentially no contraindications for the insertion of a nasal pharyngeal airway. Again, contraindications for an oral pharyngeal airway is going to be a gag reflex.